Let us present a method for computing the discriminant using the resultant. We begin with two polynomials, f of x, which is a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus a 1 x plus a 0. And we're going to factor it. So it's a n times x minus alpha 1 times x minus alpha n. And uh, g of x, which is b m x to the power m plus uh, b m minus 1 x to the m minus 1 plus uh, b 1 x plus b 0, which equals to b m times x minus beta 1 times x minus beta m. So in this setting, it will be better for us to work with polynomials that are not necessarily monic. We are going to denote by pk the space of polynomials of uh, degree less or equal to k. The dimension of the space pk is k plus 1. Consider a linear map rho from uh, the Cartesian product p m minus 1 cross p n minus 1 into p m plus n minus 1 which is uh, given by the following formula, that rho of a pair of polynomials uv is uh, equal to f times u plus g times v, where f and g are these two polynomials. We have the following simple lemma, that the kernel of rho is not equal to zero if and only if polynomials f and g have a common root, or equivalently, their greatest common divisor is different from 1. Let's give a proof. So we see that the pair uv belongs to the kernel of this map if and only if f times u is equal to minus g times v. Now, assume that the pair uv is in the kernel. And uh, let's assume that uh, suppose f and g have uh, no common roots. We use the fact that the space of polynomials is uh, a unique factorization domain. So then from here we conclude that uh, the polynomial v must have roots alpha 1 through alpha n and polynomial u must have roots beta 1 through beta m. But we have the degree of the polynomial u is less or equal to m minus 1 and degree of v is less or equal to n minus 1. And so now we get polynomials of low degrees with too many roots. So from here it follows that u must be equal to 0 and v must be equal to 0. So if polynomials f and g have no common roots, then uh, the kernel of the map rho is trivial. So conversely, so if f and g have uh, a common root gamma, then we can take v to be f of x divided by x minus gamma. And as u, we can take minus g of x 
divided by x minus gamma. And in this way, we construct a non-trivial element in the kernel of rho. Since uh, the dimensions on the left and on the right are the same, this lemma tells us uh, when the map rho is invertible. Let us choose a basis in each space p m minus 1, n minus 1, and uh, m plus n minus 1 in the following way. So for p m minus 1, we take x to the m minus 1, x to the m minus 2, dot dot dot, x, and then 1. If we choose this basis, then the matrix of rho will have uh, the following form. So, for example, the first column will correspond to f multiplied by x to the m minus 1. And so here we will have uh, the coefficients of f uh, listed in the first column and then followed by zeros. So the second column is f times x to the m minus 2. So then we see that the coefficients of f will be shifted down. And uh, so the first m columns will correspond to the basis uh, for the space of u. So the last uh, of the m group of m columns will correspond to u equals 1. And so again, we'll have uh, the coefficients of f, but now shifted down below and going to the bottom row of this matrix. And then the n columns that follow will have this similar structure but now they will be based on the coefficients of the polynomial G. This matrix will have m plus n columns and m plus n rows. And on the diagonal, we will have leading coefficients of the polynomial F followed by constant terms of the polynomial G. And now we give the definition. The resultant of two polynomials f and g is uh, denoted r of fg and it's the determinant of this matrix rho. We state the following proposition that gives the formula for the resultant that r of fg is given by the formula. So it's a n to the power m times bm to the power n times the product over i goes from 1 to n and the product j goes from 1 to m and uh, we have alpha i's which are roots of the polynomial f minus beta j's that are roots of the polynomial g. We see that this formula is consistent with the lemma that says that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero if and only if two roots of f and g coincide. And this is actually how we are going to prove this formula. Before we give the proof of this proposition, let us point out that uh, using the formulas for the polynomials g and f, we can rewrite the right-hand side in two different ways. So we can write that the same expression is equal to a n to the power m product i goes from 1 to n g of alpha i. Or this is also equal to minus 1 to the power mn, bm to the power n, the product j goes from 1 to m, f of uh, beta j. So this uh, follows immediately. So if we substitute for x alpha i, then we see that we are going to get exactly the right hand side. This determinant is manifestly a polynomial in the coefficients a i's and b j's. However, the right hand side is a function of the roots and the leading coefficients. The transition between the coefficients and the roots of polynomials are given by Vieta's theorem. Let us point out the form of Vieta's formulas uh, in the case uh, of non-monic polynomials. If we look at the coefficient a n minus 1, then we see that it's going to be equal to the leading coefficient a n times the sum of uh, the roots with a negative sign. And likewise, the constant term here is going to be the leading coefficient a n times the product of the roots with a sign which is minus 1 to the power n. Using Vieta's formulas, we see that a polynomial 
in coefficients a n, a n minus 1, a 1, a 0, may be transformed into a polynomial in the leading coefficients with the symmetric function in the roots alpha 1, alpha n. Let's give the proof of this proposition. So by lemma, we saw that this determinant or the resultant f of g is equal to zero if and only if alpha i is equal to beta j for some i and j. This tells us that uh, the resultant is divisible by the product over i goes from 1 to n, j goes from 1 to m, alpha i minus beta j. So what we are doing here is we are rewriting the resultant as a polynomial in leading coefficients and symmetric functions in alpha and betas. When we do this from Vieta's formulas, we see that uh, in the first m columns, we will get a common factor of a n because uh, each coefficient, say a n minus 1, will have a factor a n times a symmetric function in alpha. And the same is true for all coefficients of the polynomial f. So the first m columns will have common factors of a n and the last n columns will have uh, common factors of b m's. This tells us that when written in terms of the roots, the resultant is also divisible by a n to the power m and b m to the power n. Now let us count degrees. So the resultant r of fg has degree m in uh, a i's and uh, degree n in bj's. Now let us look at the right hand side. So now we want to do the opposite. So this right hand side is a symmetric function in alpha i's and beta j's and uh, a polynomial functions in the leading coefficients. We want to do the opposite transition. We want to see what it is as a function in the coefficients of the polynomial g. In order to do this, we use our second formula. So we can write this as a n to the power m times the product i goes from 1 to n. And here we have b m alpha i to the power m plus dot 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 plus b1 alpha i plus b0. And what we see is that uh, this expression is uh, a polynomial in uh, bj's and this polynomial is of degree n because here we have a product with n factors. So we see that uh, the same holds uh, for right hand side, that the right hand side is a polynomial of degree n in coefficients uh, bj's and uh, using our last formula we see that it's also a polynomial of degree m in coefficients a i's. This tells us that the value of this determinant and the formula in the right hand side are equal up to a constant factor. To show that this constant factor is equal to 1, we look the, at the coefficient at uh, a n to the power m times b0 to the power n. For this determinant, we see that this will correspond to the diagonal of this matrix. And we see that in the expansion of this determinant, the coefficient at this monomial is equal to 1. But uh, let us look at this formula. What is the coefficient at a n to the power m? times b0 to the power n. So we see that in this formula, this coefficient is also equal to 1. This proves that uh, the determinant uh, of this matrix is uh, indeed expressed by this product. Next, let us see how we can uh, use resultants in order to compute the discriminant. 
For non-monic polynomials, the discriminant is uh, given by the following formula. Discriminant of a polynomial f is equal to the leading coefficient a n to the power of 2 n minus 2 times the product over i less than j alpha i minus alpha j squared. We state the following theorem. That the resultant of a polynomial f with its derivative is equal to minus 1 to the power n times n minus 1 over 2 times a n times discriminant of the polynomial f. So in this way, we can compute the discriminant using the resultant of f and its derivative. Let us give the proof of this result. So we write down f of x as a n times the product i goes from 1 to n of x minus alpha i. Let us differentiate it using the product rule. So then we get that f prime of x is equal to a n times the sum j goes from 1 to n. And now we differentiate uh, the jth factor. So we have the product i goes from 1 to n, but i is different from j, of x minus alpha i. Let us evaluate the derivative at the root alpha k of the polynomial f. So we see that in this sum, the only non-zero term will be the term when j is uh, equal to k. So what we get is uh, the formula a n times the product over i from 1 to n. i is different from k. And here we have alpha k minus alpha i. Now let us write down the value of the resultant of f and f prime. We are going to use uh, this formula here. So this will give us a n, the leading coefficient to the power n minus 1, because the degree of f prime is n minus 1, times the product. Only now we'll switch the index from i to k. So k goes from 1 to n. And here we have f prime of alpha k. And uh, we wrote down this expression. So we get a n to the n minus 1 times the product k goes from 1 to n times uh, a n times the product i goes from 1 to n but i is different from k of alpha k minus alpha i. And uh, then it's easy to see that uh, this expression is equal to a n times minus 1 to the n times n minus 1 over 2 times the discriminant of uh, the polynomial f. As an application, let us see how to compute the discriminant for cubic polynomials. So here we will have f of x is a3 x cubed plus a2 x squared plus a1 x plus a0. And the derivative f prime of x is uh, 3 a3 x squared plus uh, 2 a2 x plus a1. Polynomial f has degree 3 and polynomial f prime has degree 2. So this means that the resultant of f and f prime is going to be the determinant of a 5 by 5 matrix. Let us write it down. The first two columns in this matrix will come from the coefficients of f, and the last three columns of the matrix will come from the coefficients of f prime. And then computing this uh, 5 by 5 determinant and applying this theorem, we obtain the formula for the discriminant of a cubic polynomial.